okay it has start charging so guys this what you see is a mixer motor it's in a pretty bad condition you can see that uh, the wiring and the winding has been burned out at least for the router although the brushes can be reused so let's open it up without any further delay Yeah, this looks good. Can be put to some good use. Let's keep it aside. And so are these. Now comes the removal of the top head. Done. And again, done. Ah. Now comes the brush. tapping removal this portion is keeping this strip in its place so we will have to push it okay once again yeah got it out and we have a full good condition brush that we can put to good use in some motor so now we can remove the stator at least and yeah here we have a stator which seems like it's fine but to be sure about it we will have to put it to resistance check that's uh, the router pretty bad condition yeah not good at all well guys i just forgot that i also needed this metal base from this uh, so obviously i will have to remove this cooling fan and it is jammed pretty good you see completely rusted over here and the legendary wd40 as you can see that i've removed the fan and all i have to do is remove this yeah done washers and the armature is now completely separate so guys finally it's time to do the resistance check for each of the two poles and uh, you see that this pole has three wires so uh, we will have to figure out the maximum resistance wires and then leave out the third wire so first confirming the resistance with the pole with two wires and what we have here is 2.1 ohms so the resistance is quite low for so many turns so what's still let's check for the other one okay yeah you see the resistance for this one is around 4 ohms what about this that is 6.3 ohms what about these two 3 ohms so guys the bad news is that uh, i think there is some shorting in this winding because the pole resistances don't match so there is going to be imbalance but guys i was lucky enough to find an identical core identical in diameter but it is much more powerful with thicker copper windings you see and it also has these pin outs for easy connection which was not the case with this cheap one and this was also lying around and it fits perfectly so i thought why not use it you see this was for this piece it fits perfectly here and this piece fits perfectly here okay perfect and the only difference is the core thickness core thickness of 26.2 mm okay 26.2 for that one now comes this one this one is 20 mm Now guys this was the armature of that universal motor from a mixer and I have chipped away these two sides to place the magnets and I am going to use the perfect concave magnets okay you see how it fits over here yeah and same for the other one and it's something like this
perfect well now it's finally time to assemble all of them together and check how much electricity it can generate so base comes here and then now goes the field or rotor yeah, initially it was armature but now it is field or you can say rotor and then the top head Yeah. Done. Well, guys, here on the shaft, you can see that I have placed WD-40 to make it work smooth. And uh, same for the base. There are no brushes. And uh, you can see the magnet. Okay. Uh, also, the air gap is maintained it is very less. So, uh, the magnets are going to induce huge EMF on the field poles. So let's measure the voltage generated by one pole. Well, here I've pointed the meter towards AC, AC voltage because it is going to produce AC. You can see simple rotation and it is generating around 2.5 volts AC. 3.3, yeah, 3.5 volts for one single pole with hand rotation. Imagine guys when I connect both the poles in series then obviously the hand rotation voltage is going to go around 7 or 8 volts and with rope rotation testing and uh, like uh, if I run this motor with this drill machine and all then obviously the voltage will easily reach around 12 volts and also if you see the thickness of the copper winding it is good enough to produce good current So guys, today we are going to do the performance and generation power testing of this modified mixer motor to dynamo. I have added this drill chuck at the back because it was moving up and down a lot and also it is easier to rotate it like this with this chuck. And uh, now comes the important part. This coil has these two terminals and this coil has these two terminals and we have to connect both the coils together in series in such a way that the voltage gets doubled when I rotate the shaft with this okay so initially it was generating in my previous video which you saw it was generating around 3.5 volts AC so our target is to achieve around 6.5 to 7 volts with hand rotation so I have connected one pin over here and the other one I will connect over here well right now I'm doing just hit and try one terminal connected now uh, the terminals that are left out are one terminal is this and the other one is this so to this terminal i will add this done so now in total i have two terminals so to these two terminals i will connect a multimeter and then measure the voltage i am achieving now let's rotate the shaft and see if the voltage has increased you see the truth is the voltage has decreased so this means that the connection I have made are just the opposite of what I needed. Okay, so I will have to change that. And now the voltage generated should be higher. You see, the voltage has increased. This means the connection are correct now. Simple rotation and easily 1.5 volts. Let's go a little higher. 6 volts. <laughs> Whoa, and I think I will be doing the test with this drill machine. Okay, it's easier to do that. But before that, let's connect this black tape on this wire. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See for the voltage over there. Why is it not measuring voltage beyond 7 volts? So 10 volts was the max I could get with this drill machine. Again. Yeah, 10.32 volts. Well guys, now I'm going to repeat this very test with a bigger 350 watts drill machine with an even higher RPM and torque. Let's see how much, sorry, it's going to be AC volts. Let's see how much AC voltage it generates. Okay. Twelve 
22 volts around a 24 or 23 volts pretty good voltage for AC so guys now I'm going to connect this car headlamp bulb okay and since it's a DC lamp so I am using a rectifier 35 amperes bridge rectifier okay well there is a lot of lighting in the room let's turn it off and then do this test again pretty good Although guys uh, the AC uh, was not completely purified because I didn't add any additional condenser or capacitor to these two DC terminals to pure the DC line because of which there was a lot of uh, flickering in its operation. You see a lot of flickering which would not be the case if I had connected a capacitor so let's do that and then check out the results so guys this is a 7000 microfarad 40 volts dc capacitor so i'm going to connect it to this and i hope for better output results you see the lighting is much more better there is very less flickering now Well guys now to the output terminal I have connected this 220 volts transformer so uh, I'm going to boost the voltage from 24 volts yeah it is generating 24 volts to 220 volts maybe even more let's see how much voltage it produces at the output connections have completed let's turn it on So as you saw that it is generating pretty good voltage and transforming it then to 256 or 260 volts which is exactly what we get here in India in our AC sockets. Well guys this one what you see is my cordless drill battery charger okay see 48 volts and uh, I'm using this instead of a mobile phone charging demonstration because this one has this uh, LED light indicator and it is two way red and green so uh, I can do good demonstration with it and this is my uh, 48 volts lithium ion battery pack that this charger is going to charge okay yeah connections have been made yeah that's the indicator remember okay okay it has started charging well the generator here as you can see is connected to the drill machine and to the transformer and to my night bulb okay